last, last of our Sundays talking about uh, this new journey that God has called us on. And it's a journey, it's a, it's a new journey of faith. It's a faith, it's a faith journey for us to say, you know what, God, what do you, what do you want to do in my life that's different this year than maybe last year? Um, and we've used that, I've used that as an opportunity also to talk about how being part of of a worshiping community, how we can help you to go a little bit deeper in that journey. So the first week we talked about uh, journey worship, the worship part of journey. And then last week we talked about the deepen part of journeying with God. And today we're going to be talking about uh, journey impact. We're going to be talking about what does it mean to serve Christ both inside and outside the church uh, for, for maximum impact in a world that just desperately needs God. So that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Um, some of you will be glad, and some of you will be like, you should have moved on two weeks ago. Uh, we're going to do some more Name That Tune on Journey Songs. And I actually have a bonus round today that has nothing to do with music. Okay, so let's go. What do we got? Now this is like Cheesy Journey. We've moved out of Good Journey into Cheesy Journey. Newer Journey. Anybody know this song? We're my journey fans. What? Give my love. Anyone? I stumped you. That's awesome. That was like one of their late 90s kind of hits. Like, it wasn't really a hit. This was enough of a hit. When You Love a Woman is what the name of that song is. Next song. Now this also, cheesy journey time. Anyone? No. Be good to yourself. There you go. Well, come on. All right. This is a little more classic. Girl can't help it. All right. Very nice. Is there one more, John? One more? What is it? What is it? Ask the Lonely. Very nice. Okay, so the, there's like four Journey fans in the room. They're right here. <laughs> the rest of you, we just thank you for playing along, really. We do. We do. Yeah, that's right. There you go. They're not from, they ain't, they ain't from around here. Um, <laughs> so, now, and this is, this is a bonus round for the four of you who are still listening to anything I'm saying. Here's a picture. Who is this? You have to name this person. It's a foot. It's at the bottom of the pay, it's at the bottom of the media shop. It's not playing. Whose feet are those? I don't know. It's not going to work apparently. I had a friend who knew I was doing this journey this journey series about journeying with God and he lives in California and he went to this uh, this huge uh, North American music maker show called NAM and he took a picture of a journey of a journey member that he saw while he was at this deal and sent it to me yesterday or a couple days ago. It was Neil Sean. Okay, so thank you, thank you. Those are Neil Sean's feet right there. So anyway, that's the old journey, right? That's the classic journey. That's the, that's the old journey. We're talking about a new journey. We're talking about, again, what is God doing in us? What, what's different that he wants to do in us uh, this year, this moment, this time? Uh, what does God want to do new in your life? And then, again, how as a worshiping community can the watershed help be a part of that? So, uh, so uh, we're going to delve in here to the book of James. Do you guys, do we have that? Is that, is that working? It is? Let's go ahead and put it up there. All right, so uh, James chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 22 and following. And uh, we're going to just hear a word from God this morning. And I invite you to hear, don't... Uh, you know, don't, don't check out. Sometimes we check out when somebody reads the Bible because maybe the language isn't familiar or something. Check in. This is, this is God's word uh, that he has to say to us today. It says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, 
they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep, it, keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Will you guys pray with me? God, thank you so much for this day, for your word, for, uh, for speaking to us. We thank you that uh, the scriptures aren't just some dead book that's been written thousands of years ago, but that still you're using them to, to tweak us and to prod us and to discomfort us until we become more and more like your son, Christ. God, we, um, we do ask this morning, I ask this morning, that you, you would either speak a word through me or that you would get me out of the way and speak a word in spite of me. God, I know that these people didn't come to hear me talk or even cheesy journey songs. They came um, because they want to be transformed by you, and that's certainly why I've come. So, Holy Spirit, be our teacher this morning. We pray these things as we pray them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to go through, uh, again, from this perspective of journey impact, the impact part of the journey. We talked about worship. We've talked about deepening our journey, but what does it mean uh, to... That for impact to be part of this journey. And so we looked at this scripture in James, uh, in, in James chapter 1, and I just I want to kind of pull, you know, highlight some of, these, some of these verses and really hear what James has to say about, uh, about impact. So we'll start there in verse uh, 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Now this is, you know, this, is, it's not, this isn't rocket science. This is pretty simple stuff, except for... Um, I don't know if, you, if it's true in your life, but most of us, we don't have a hearing problem. We have an obedience problem when it comes to God, right? Um, it's, not that we're, it, it's not that we don't know that we're supposed to love our neighbor. It's that we have a hard time sometimes doing it, especially when they're kind of knuckleheads, you know? Um, and it's just hard to love knuckleheads sometimes. Oh, and by the way, we're sometimes the knuckleheads, right? And so, so it's not that we don't always know what to do. A lot of times it's just that we don't do what we're supposed to do. And so for James, he starts off and, and he says, you know, do not merely listen to the word so, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And then he lifts up this really cool analogy. He says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And then after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. And now what you need to understand is that the image that, that James is using here, it's a, it's a rhetorical image from ancient rhetoric. You know, ancient Greek philosophers, when they would write and when they would speak, they would use this image of looking at yourself in the mirror for self-improvement. So maybe you would practice in front of a mirror to uh, do better at your uh, philosophizing, or maybe it was just to get that cow lick, you know, that you had, you know, in the morning, uh, or, or the blemish that you wanted to cover up or whatever it is, but they would use this image of looking in a mirror to improve yourself. And James is just, he's just using the image that they have used and he, and he, and he just kind of takes it a step further. What he says is um, that, you know, that if we hear God's word, if we hear the good news about Christ, and, then we, and we hear it but we don't do what it says, it's like we've looked into the mirror and, and we've seen what's wrong with us, but then we don't do anything about it. I don't know if you guys, I, I got a haircut a couple weeks ago, can you tell? Can you tell? Um, thanks. Um, so, but... Uh, most people can't tell because my hair is usually so short anyway. But my theory about hair is if you have to look at it in the mirror when you wake up, it's too long. Okay? I mean, I'm, I, it's not a very difficult standard. Um, but there have been times when I don't go every three or four weeks and just get it, you know, shaved as short as they can shave it. Um, I, what, and what will happen is, like, I'll, I'll be, you know, driving the kids to school through the little, you know, drop-off line. And I'll look up in the rearview mirror and my hair will be standing like this. Now, it's only this long, but it's still standing up like that. You know, and so then I do what my mom taught me how to do. You know what your mom taught you how to do, right? What? Spit bath, right? It's, all, it's spit bath time. And so, uh, and so that's what I do. And I go, and I start doing that. Now, the, the problem is that's actually a mistake because then my hair actually still doesn't go down. It's just wet and shiny now. So now it just kind of makes it stand out. It was a mistake. I never, I, I need to talk to my mom about that advice. But, you know, we, when we see what's wrong with us, we would typically try to, you know, try to cover it up or, or change it. And what James is saying is, look, that's not, that's not, uh, you know, that, 
you know, that's, we would never do that, right? We would never look at ourselves in the mirror and not change what we see. And so what he's saying is, you know, somebody who hears the good news about Christ or, or who hears what it means to follow Christ and chooses not to do it is like somebody who's looked in the mirror and they've seen how awesome God is and how much he loves us and how merciful he is and, and how we can live our lives for him. But, but, but we decide, it's like we see this big old calyx you know, on, our, on our hair and we just walk away from it and just don't do anything about it. And we would never, we would never do that. And so, uh, and so the first thing I think we can really hear this morning, if you're taking notes this morning, this is just really simple. It's, I know this sounds like Christ, Christian 101, but it's don't just hear it, do it. Right? God's giving us an opportunity. He's given us a mirror to look, and, and it's his word, and it's, it's fellow Christians, and we, we help each other, and we see what's going on with us. Don't walk away from the mirror. Don't just hear what God has to say but actually put into practice what God has to say. Jesus actually tells us this in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, he uses a different analogy. He says, anyone who hears my words but chooses not to do them is like, is like a fool uh, who builds their house on sand. You remember that analogy? And he says, you know, look, when the rains and the storms come, the sand's not going to stick around. It's, it's gone, and so is the house that's built on top of it. And so Jesus says the exact same thing to us uh, earlier in the New Testament, uh, that we shouldn't just hear the word. We should put it into practice. Uh, the second thing, if we, if we just read on down a little bit further, it says, those who consider themselves religious. I mean, you've got to know he wanted to... Uh, I wish they had things like quotation marks in, uh, in, in Greek uh, because you've got to know that he wanted to say, those of you who consider yourself, and you can do it with me, religious, who consider yourselves religious, right? Uh, those, those people uh, who consider themselves religious and do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. This next sentence, I'm not all that smart, but if God tells you something like this, we ought to pay attention. He says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. Now, if you're like me, you ought to sit up in your chair and lean forward a little bit because God is getting ready to tell us what true religion is. What true religion is. Because, you know, we have all these faulty kind of understandings and it gets practiced in crazy ways and we're all messed up so we all mess it up and what James says is the, the kind of religion that is acceptable to God and remember we're still talking about hearing it and doing it here he says this is the, this is it right here he says to look after orphans and widows in their distress now, I'm going to stop I'm going to stop there and camp out and then I'll sh share with you the second half of that sentence to look after orphans and widows in their distress so so the second, the second note this morning is following Jesus uh, or true religion impacts the people around us. What you need to see here is that God has a special heart for orphans and widows, for people who don't have a voice for themselves, for people who, uh, who can't speak up for themselves, for people who are the least and the last and the lost. We see this all through Jesus' ministry. Who does he hang out with but prostitutes and tax collectors? Who does he, uh, who does he have his, reserve his strictest... Um, you know, just mad, angry language towards it's the religious folks. And Jesus is saying these orphans and these widows and people like them, this is not an exhaustive list here, but people like these orphans and widows, orphans who don't have a home, widows whose husband uh, in, in, this, in his day and age, whose husband has died and who have no way to provide food or housing for themselves, and he says, you want to know what true religion looks like. You want to know what following Jesus is supposed to look like. Look after those orphans and widows and people like them. So following Jesus or true religion impacts the people around us. I, uh, the other day, yesterday I guess it was, it was yes, yeah, yesterday Saturday, right? Uh, yesterday I took my kids to Toys R Us and we bought spy gear. Now don't tell the Soviets and the Chinese government, but you can actually buy spy gear at Toys R Us, okay? Here in America, right here, I'm just telling you. And so, if you see my kids, I'm just going to warn you, this is fair warning, if you see my kids walking around with sunglasses that are about three sizes too big for them, and they're kind of hanging off because they're too big, and you start seeing them do this, it's because they're videoing you. <laughs> just be careful around my kids, that's all I'm saying, okay? 
Um, so we got this spy gear, and the reason we got this spy gear is because they love to run around the house, and, and you know, I actually, was, I actually encouraged them to get it, although I didn't really think about the fact they're going to run around videoing stuff in our house. Uh, it's all going to end up on YouTube. That's what I'm a little bit nervous about. But, but they love running around, and they play together really well, and they, and they become these spies, and they go around, they sneak around, and they do all this stuff around the house. It's a lot of fun to watch. So I actually encouraged them to get it. But, but sometimes, you know, because they, they love to play these games where they sneak around and it's secret and all that kind of stuff. I think one of the things James is really trying to make sure we understand is that Christianity is not a secret spy game. Um, it's it, re, true religion. The way that we practice it as we follow Jesus is not some secret that we carry close to our heart. It's not just about me. It's about we. And it's about they. And it's about you know, us having a heart for the people who are outside the four walls of this place. And so, so there's this impact that happens beyond us. If we're really following Christ, this impact happens beyond just the people in this room. It's supposed to impact us, but because it has impacted us, it's supposed to impact the people around us. This news is too good to contain. It's too good to sneak around with. When we hear how much God has loved us and what he has done, to be about our redemption. We can't do anything else but go out and let that impact other people. And so that may be a simple invitation to church, or it may be walking alongside somebody at work, or it may be sharing your stuff to help an orphan or a widow or an after-school program for kids who don't have anybody at home when they get home. I don't know what it means for you specifically, but what it means is, is that the true religion, that word's not a bad word in the New Testament because... It's, it's a real, you know, you see it right here. But true religion has an impact beyond us. It, it impacts into the community and the world around us. So I want to camp out there for just a second. We're talking these last three weeks about the strategies here at the watershed. When people come to the watershed and they say, hey, how do I get to know this God better? How, do I, how can I journey closer to Christ? We, we have three answers. Worship, we said. Worship, deep, and impact. When we talk about worship, we talked about that personal relationship with Christ, that you know, devotional and scripture and prayer and those things that we can do at home. But we also talked about the we part of this. We gather together because the person next to you is sometimes going to need you, and you're sometimes going to need them. There's a, there's a corporate aspect of worship. So worship is one of those things. The second one is deepen. And there's a lot of different ways to deepen our faith and to get to know God better. There's all kinds of Bible studies and prayer groups and all, all different kinds of things. Some of them we do here. Some of them, some of you are already a part of small groups and other places. There's a lot of different ways to deepen your faith. But our primary way here is through these deeper groups that meet, you know, once, once a week, groups of 8 to 12 people. They study together, they fellowship together, they pray together, and they serve together. So worship and deepen. Now, that's not the only way. We have an adult Sunday school class. It's really incredible. I hope you guys will check it out. We have a prayer group that just started on Fridays once a month to pray for the persecuted church. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But if you were to look at, if you were to look at us and you were to say, what's the primary way you do that? Make it simple for me. Worship, deepen. Last one is impact. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Let's talk about what do, what do I mean when I say impact? When I'm, when I'm talking about impact, what we would hope that everybody in the sound of my voice would do is to find a place to serve Christ inside the church and outside the church. So let me talk about both of those really quickly separately. First of all, inside the church. Somebody this morning set up this curtain and this screen and this space so that when you came in, it would feel to you like sacred space. Somebody scheduled the greeters and somebody volunteered to be greeters uh, who would just be a smiling face um, at the front door. And, and sometimes we have them out in the parking lot. And... Uh, you know, some, somebody bought the donuts and somebody made the coffee this morning and, and somebody serves on the finance committee and the trustees committee and the staffing team and the church council. Somebody study, uh, serves in all these different places to help us be the church uh, that we need to be. God brings people here. There are first-time visitors here this morning and there are people who were first-time visitors who are no longer first-time visitors, which is really cool. And, and the, when we serve inside the church, it helps us prepare for who God's going to bring us. This new Connect ministry that Susan was talking about is an incredible opportunity for us to make sure that when new people come, we don't just say, hey, we're glad that you came, and we send them a letter, and we never talk to them again. No, we have people who are going to come alongside of them and help them get connected. All those things are ways for us to welcome the stranger, just to be, um, just to be the church. So finding a place to serve inside the church is really important. It's important to the work of God in the world. 
But I also want to be clear that the other 50% or more of, what you, of the impact you're going to have in the world happens outside the four walls of this place. So, so God doesn't just want you to serve in the church and then check off the box and, and say, I'm done. No, God wants each of us all the time, everywhere that we are, to look for places and ways to impact the world for Christ. That Christian baseball coach for Little League. The, the, the co-worker at work who decides to lead a, a Bible study at lunch for others who would voluntarily come to it. Um, the person who serves on the rezoning committee at the, at the district level for, the, for the, the, the changes that are coming in CCISD. Whatever, you name what it is, but being a Christian right where you are, doing the things that you love to do, but doing it in a way that honors and glorifies Christ. I hope that you intentionally seek out a way to serve Christ inside the church, but I also know that God wants us to serve him everywhere that we are in all those little circles of influence, things that we would never think about. Um, you know, the first time I, when I, after we started this church, was the first time I ever considered that when I was my kid's soccer coach, when they were four and five or five and six years old, was that was an opportunity for me to glorify God as a soccer coach. I never thought about that before, and I don't want any of us to leave not thinking about that this morning. So, uh, so that's what it means. When we say worship, deepen, and impact. Impact means find a place to serve God here, but find a place to serve God intentionally where you, in all of your spheres of influence. Last thing, just real quick this morning, verse 27. The second half of verse 27. This is still on that, the question of what is acceptable true religion. The second part of that, uh, of that uh, verse is to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And so I, I think if you were just to paraphrase that, I think what James is saying is we're called to change the world, not to let the world change us. We're called to change the world, not to let the world change, not, not to let uh, the world change us, or not the other way around if you're taking notes this morning. Um, James, what James is saying is God has a set of values. Um, God has a certain way that he wants us to love and people that he wants us to love and serve. He has a heart, as we said, for the poor and the lost and the broken. He wants us to have a heart for the poor and the lost and the broken. And he wants us to, to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. God has a certain way of doing things, but it is not always our culture's way of doing things. And so what he says is, you know, uh, our, our job is to be transformers of culture, not being transformed by it. And I, and I know that that's, that's always harder, I think, than it, than, it, than it really sounds. And I think um, anytime you enter into a work environment or a school environment, you know that people don't always see things the same way God sees things. But our job, as we're having this impact inside the church and outside the church in the world around us, our job is to, is to lift up God's values, to lift up God's Son in such a way that, that people would see the difference between what God values and what the world values. And, and be a part of the transformation of that in other people's eyes. So that's what, that's what this journey ought to look like for us. As we journey closer to Christ, we ought to be a people who are about worship. This is the God of the universe we're talking about. Um, he is everything. And he deserves everything that we are and everything that we have. And he, and he asks relatively little. Uh, and yet he asks for everything. So worship. Uh, he, he wants us to grow closer to him. He wants us to get to know him better, and we do that through scripture and prayer and, and Christian, genuine Christian community. So we say deepen. And then impact. We, uh, we can't live with a, a real faith that's not making a difference in the lives of the people around us. And I would challenge you and I'd challenge myself this week, as you leave this place today, be thinking about how can I serve Christ inside the church and how can I serve, the, serve Christ when I go to work tomorrow or when I'm at home with my kids this afternoon? How can we be transformers of culture instead of being transformed by it? Will you guys pray with me? God, you are uh, amazing. You do deserve everything that we have and everything that we are, and we... We, uh, we want to give you what you deserve. God, we admit to you this morning that sometimes it's our tendency to hold on to us, to hold on to our hearts and to our minds 
We'd rather follow our will than to follow your will sometimes. God, I pray that you would forgive us for those things. God, I pray more than anything on this morning that you would show us how we can have impact. We don't want to just be religious folks. We don't want to just be some place where people come to check off a box. God, we want to make a difference in the world. We want our dash between those two dates to be lived to its fullest. We want to serve you in every, in every aspect of our lives. God, I pray that you would help us to do that. You are an awesome and an amazing God. You have impacted us. The collision that you've had with us has altered our course forever. May we so collide with the world. We love you, Jesus. Amen. I want to invite you guys this morning to just take a prayer time. It can be right where you are. It can be on the prayer stations on either side of the room. Uh, I, obviously, I just trust the Holy Spirit will have whatever conversation with you that he needs to have. Let's take a time of prayer.